Right now I'm booting into uh, a Ubuntu Live CD and what we're going to be doing today is creating a uh, live image on our hard drive. Basically if you're familiar with Linux at all, you're probably familiar with Live CDs, uh, which means you're booting your operating system off a CD and one of the great things about this is it allows you to test out an operating system before you install it, but also any changes you make when you restart the computer, they're gone. Now if you're running a machine uh, that you have multiple users and you want to give them the freedom to change things and move things around but you want it to uh, refresh every time they restart this is very easy if you install a live CD instead of installing it as an operating system you install it as a live system to your hard drive now there's two ways to do that I'm going to show you today the easy way to do it for people who just want to do it and don't want to get too technical about it using UNet Bootin which is normally used to install a live CD image to a flash drive so you can boot off it but we're going to do the same thing but do it to the hard drive today um, and in the next video I'm going to show you how to do it the more advanced way manually doing it which gives you a lot more options that I'll go over in that tutorial uh, now there are a few things we gotta do now once again I'm running as a live CD right now I have a partition hard drive already it's 8.6 gigs uh, there it is there's nothing on it uh, and you want to do it as a uh, uh, VFAT partition uh, ext2 or ext3 would be fine and NTSF will probably fine too um, so I already have this partition as an ext either 3 or 2 we'll check that out in a moment uh, and I have it mounted there now. Uh, next thing we need to do, we need to go to System, Administration, and we're going to go down to Software Sources. Now since I'm running a uh, Ubuntu Live CD and I want to install Net UNet Bootin, which isn't in default repositories, I'm going to check these two boxes, which adds some more repositories to my install. Um, I'm not sure which one UNet Bootin is in. Probably this community uh, maintained uh, open source universe. Um, but I'm checking both because it doesn't matter because I'm running as a live CD now so all these changes are going to be gone once I restart the machine anyway. When you click close it will ask you to reload uh, the list. So I click that now it's checking the servers and getting an updated list of all available software. Um, and while that's doing it now you can install any Linux live CD ISO the way we're doing this but I'm going to choose to install Slitaz. Uh, the main reason I'm doing that is because Slitaz is a very small Linux distribution. It's the, the full version, it, the largest version of it is 30 megabytes and so it will install a lot faster than trying to install a let's say Ubuntu which is uh, 600 and some megabytes um, and another good thing about installing as a live system is you're installing a compressed image. So, for example, Ubuntu, if we were to do this with Ubuntu, Ubuntu comes in a CD image that fits on a CD, like I said, like 650 megabytes, something like that. If you actually install it to the hard drive, it would decompress to about three times that size. So it'd be like a gig and a half, between a gig and a gig and a half. Installing it this way, you only need that 600 megabytes, 650 megabytes. Even smaller with Slitaz, which you need like 128 megabytes to install uh, Slitaz, which we're going to slitaz.org. Uh, you only need 30 megabytes. So, you know, any hard drive that you would possibly be able to find would be way larger than you need to do this. So slitaz.org, I chose English, I'm going to downloads, and I'm just going to choose their cooking version, which is uh, their unstable version, but uh, that's just what I'm choosing to work with here. Um, and once again you just choose your Linux distribution of your choice. Uh, now while that's downloading, which shouldn't take long since it's only 30 megabytes, I'm going to go to Applications, Accessories, and I'm going to open up the terminal. And I'm going to use Aptitude to install, but if you're more comfortable with Synaptic, we're just installing UNet Bootin. So I'm going to do sudo aptitude install UNet Bootin. It will want to install a few other packages. It will ask us right here. We'll just hit Y for yes and hit enter and we'll download and install those and it will take uh, a minute or so. Uh, it's going to be 27 megabytes once it's uncompressed, uh, installed and uncompressed. But once again, we're running on a live system here. So anything we install is going to be gone once we reboot anyway. And soon we'll have a permanent uh, install that will refresh and we don't have to run off a CD. And running off the hard drive is going to be a lot faster than running off a CD too. If you ever run off a flash drive, you know what I'm talking about. So Slitaz is done installing. One of the things I need to check, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my downloads folder where Slitaz ISO is installed, or 
sitting right now. I'm going to right click it and say open with archive mounter. And that kind of mounts it as though it was a CD or hard drive right over here. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to go to, uh, I think, boot. Yes. Uh, and it's important we look at this. We're going to need this number later. Uh, this is the kernel version and that changes all the time. So even though I'm giving you this tutorial and it's uh, 2.6.30 dot six in a month from now it might be seven at the end or eight at the end um, so just showing you where to get that number you mount it and then go into the boot folder and you also have to check that for different distributions oh wait I'm getting into the uh, more advanced tutorial you don't need to know that for this tutorial sorry ignore that last step uh, so unet bootin is installed I'm going to go to System Tools, Unit Bootin. And it'll open up. Now, Unit Bootin will also allow you to choose from a drop down list a bunch of different distributions and we'll try to download them for you. But we're going to use the ISO we just downloaded. So I'm going to choose Disk Image and I'm going to go to where I have that ISO installed, which is my home directory, username Ubuntu um, Downloads, right here. Slit has Cooking ISO. So we have that shows, so disk image there. Now you see by default it says USB drives and there are none, I don't have any hooked up. And you can also choose hard disk, which doesn't show my hard drive either. It just shows our root directory, which is actually running from RAM. That's not where we want to install. Let's go back to USB drive and now we can choose show all drives. It says use this with care. Now the reason it's saying use this with care is if you already have something installed on a drive, this will override a lot of stuff. So make sure you're choosing the right drive, which in our case is SDA, in my case, is device SDA1. So it's my first hard drive, first partition. And I'm going to click OK. Once again, make sure you choose what's right for your system. And you can see since Slitaz is so small, it's already installed, it's already done. We're going to click Reboot. And when we reboot, and we boot from the hard drive instead of the CD this time around, it will boot into a unit boot in uh, grub screen and will boot into Slitaz. Um, and it will work like a live system as you'll see here in a moment. So there we go. We're going to click default. You can change that menu up in the grub settings um, or whatever the bootloader is for uh, unit boot in. I think it uses grub. Um, once we boot into Slitaz, which is now running as a compressed image off uh, the hard drive, uh, we'll make some changes, reboot, and you'll see that it goes back to the default settings. And as I said, I'm going to give you a more advanced tutorial coming up soon on doing this manually, which actually doesn't even uncompress the ISO. It, you can actually have multiple ISOs and you can choose to boot from different ISOs. Now, uh, Slitaz always asks you the first time you boot what language and your keyboard set up. So since this is like a live CD, Every time we boot, it will ask that. Not every distribution will do that. If you did this with Ubuntu, it would not do that. So here we go. I'm going to right click and I'm going to remove the wallpaper in the background. I'm going to create a new folder on the desktop and I'll create a new text file on the desktop and I'll remove some stuff from the panel like that. And so you can see I've changed things around a little bit. Let's go to log out, reboot the system. that failed right there is actually just because I don't have a video card hooked up to this virtual machine. And we're going to boot. Once again, same screen. See right here it's decompressing the Linux image. And Slitaz actually runs completely off RAM anyway by default. Um, so that is, is also nice. But if you actually didn't install Slitaz, it would save changes that you make on the hard drive. But since we did this using UNet Bootin, as you'll see in a moment, it'll be a completely fresh machine. So you can give your users uh, somewhat free range. You still probably don't want to give them root access, but you can allow them, they can download files and, and whatever, and when they reboot, let them know that everything will be deleted once it reboots so they don't lose any important files. Um, so I chose my language and my keyboard set up, and here we are, back at our desktop. We got our desktop wallpaper there. Those icons are gone, and these ones are back. It's a live system. Um, the only real drawback of doing it this way is that everything's running out of RAM. So if you have two gigs of RAM and someone download, tries to download two gigs worth of, of data from the internet, you're going to run out of 
of hard drive and RAM space pretty fast. Um, but for most everyday use, if you're not downloading large files or doing something like video editing, basic office work, this is perfect. So that's the simple way of installing uh, a live image to a hard drive using UNet Bootin. Uh, stay tuned for the more advanced way, uh, which gets our hands a little dirty. Have a great day, and visit filmsbychris.com.